everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Adele and we're going to be talking about how she's able to refinance her properties, pull out capital and go and buy additional properties. I love this strategy. I'm so excited that Adele is here to share her knowledge on this topic. Before we get into it with Adele, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and feel free to leave comments and questions below for the both of us. Uh, without further ado, Let's get into it, Adele. So great to have you here with me today. Uh, why don't you give everyone a brief intro on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor before we jump in this morning? So I'm a real estate investor as a, well, as a side hustle anyway, yeah. and I've been doing it for 30 years this year. So I started off pretty young, uh, bought a triplex when I was 23, and then I took a little bit of a pause uh, and because, you know, waiting for equity to build up in that little triplex. But I, uh, I've said it before, this was, that was my first real estate mistake because I sold it. That was, that was before I knew that my little buildings could have babies and, you know, forever supply cash, <laughs> cash to buy more. And then I took a little break. Uh, we have four children. So, you know, took time to be a mom, uh, and waited for the equity to build up. And the one I did purchase as a, was a duplex after that. And then from there, it kind of, uh, as you know, where I met you, I joined Keyspire and that's where I met you a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, sort of grew my education, not just Keyspire, but other, um, I'm, I'm a part of other programs, mentoring programs. Um, I follow a lot of smart people like yourself on their YouTube channels. And so I started gaining more knowledge and more knowledge, and it just speeded up the process, right? So I was doing it, but doing it alone and at a very slow pace. And then my accountant actually helped out when he said it was time for me to refinance the duplex that I had, because he's also a real estate investor himself. And then from there it took off. It took off because obviously the market has been great. And uh, I love that my, my buildings have babies and they provide, uh, they're, they're my bank, right? They provide my cash for my down payments and I keep doing it over and over and over. Amazing. I love that. I love that you've been uh, experienced in a, in a variety of different real estate investing strategies and techniques. I know you're more focused on multifamily now, and that's yep. what we're going to talk about today. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, why the, uh, how did you make the transition from the duplexes and triplexes into multifamily? Once you know how to manage a two and a four and you know a three and a six, whatever, it's just natural. It's just, it's just the natural progression is to increase the amount of doors all under one roof, it's more contained. To me, it just made sense, right? I not and there's less running around. You can have mm. six twos or one twelve, and, okay. and it makes more sense. I also yeah. had to invest in different provinces because Montreal was a little bit crazy. <laughs> Montreal <laughs> is a little bit nuts. Uh, the down payment amounts needed now here, never mind 2025. If you don't put down 3540, you're not even going to get in, and the bidding wars are just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, that was to me, was just natural to grow from the smaller plexes to the larger plexes. Explain, um, because I think a lot of people are looking at using the, the um, you know, the, the idea of saving up enough money to buy properties two, three, and four. And what you're talking about is using your existing properties, refinancing them to pull capital and use that money to, to go out and buy additional properties. So how is it that you know where, where that point is where you can pull out capital in your buildings? Yes. So my buildings, I see them as ATM machines. Like, honestly, that's, that's what they are, right? Uh, I'm a buy and hold long-term buy and hold kind of person. Like I said, it's, this is a retirement plan. The, I, that strategy of when I'm going to refi I think that through when I, at the purchase point. So when at the time I'm purchasing, the strategy is already in place as to how quickly can I refinance that particular property. So for example, we just got a check in our bank account um, Friday and it's a refi of a 12 plex we bought in Ontario, my husband and I, one year ago. So we, at month 10, we started the refinancing of that one. I turned over three tenants out of the 12. No evictions, no cash for keys, okay? Just because COVID hit the week we, we closed. Uh, yeah. So nobody was pushed out. The three, that, the three that we changed over left on their own. They went from, I think it was 585, 850, and 900 in rent to 1060, 1300, and 1350. Just with those three and with the renovations that we've done on the three that left, uh, the three units. So yep. we put in about $40,000, both inside and their staircase outside. I think I even posted some pictures. 
So the property increased in value in the 12 months, $433,000. I multiplied my, my renovation. So I put in 40 and pulled out 433. But the initial deposit for that 12 plex did not come out of our savings account. This is why I say my multiplexes are my ATM machines. They're my bank. Mm -hmm. It was the duplex and the fourplex in Montreal that got refinanced to put down the down payment on that 12. It's a constant rotation. And when you have them spread out, there's always one that's up for refinancing, right? So let, mm -hmm. right now, so we got the check in the bank last Friday and we're starting this week on the triplex in Ontario, refinancing that one as well. Let's uh, simplify a little bit for folks that are maybe not super familiar with this process, um, because you're talking about using your properties as an ATM. One of the questions that's going to come up is, well, then aren't you raising the mortgages on those existing buildings? And then how do you keep covering that mortgage amount is, is my first question. Perfect. So yes, absolutely. And that's part of the calculation that I do at the beginning. So and again, I'll speak about this 12 because it, it was just done. So the numbers are fresh, right? Yes, you're increasing uh, the payments, the mortgage payments. But technically, by increasing, by getting that lift and optimizing the unit, your rents are higher. So now my rents that went up, uh, what was it? About close to $1,000, okay? Just those three units or actually more, $1,400. Those three units created $1,400 or more a month, right? So that's a mm -hmm. month. Yes, the mortgage payer payments will be higher, but technically the expenses should be either the same or lower. You should be optimizing your buildings. You should be looking to decrease something, right? You should be, when you're optimizing a multifamily, whether it's insurance quotes or whether it's uh, heating or different ways of heating or putting in internet to get an extra cash or uh, providing laundry, a la laundry service, which we do have for coin laundry, you have to optimize. Well, basically we're talking about uh, net operating income, right? So you mm -hmm. want to improve on that. Every time a tenant moves out, that's your chance to bring a unit to market rents. So that extra cash is paying for that extra debt. And when you finance um, multifamilies, the bank will look at the building. So the DCR, which is the debt, the debt coverage ratio, I like to be around, I know banks finance at 1.21, 2.5, same HC is 1.3. So for every dollar of expense, I look to have at least 1.353843 of income. Most mm -hmm. of my buildings all have a DCR of over 135, 140, 150, even 170. So for every dollar that goes out, a dollar 70 or dollar 50 comes in. So you the debt is higher, but the the bank will finance you if the income covers your debt, all of it, all the expenses. The duplex and triplex, you're saying you use those ones as to be able to finance some of the other purchases as well. But we know that on a duplex triplex, you as the borrower are gonna to have to qualify for that increased mortgage amount. And how are you able to do that? Are you doing that through your T4 employee sort of a job that you have, if you will? Uh, because I know that the banks for a lot of people, if we're self-employed or if we're real estate and full-time real estate investors, which a lot of us aspire to be, they're gonna say, well, you don't have the income to support increasing the debt on that duplex or triplex because they're looking at you personally in order to be able to take that capital and invest it and buy another building. So explain how you're able to do that. Yes. So the duplex, which I bought in uh, 1999, that one was refinanced to purchase the four. Okay. So the four here in Montreal and the two, the four, the money, sorry, the two had a baby, which was the four. Then those two both got refinanced last year to purchase the 12. Yes, so the bank looked at us. Now, every time we refinance, every single time, even for the 12s and the above six and up or the six and below, we always had to give our income taxes, our notice of assessments to the bank. So the list of the grocery list of documents, which is like, can be very overwhelming during a refinance. It's not, yes, the building qualifies, but the bank has always, always asked for our T4s. So our taxes of the previous year, the corporation's financial statements, our notice of assessments, obviously, and any other property you have, the income and expense report of each property you own every time we refinance one. So you got to give the balance sheet of every other property. Um, the duplex and the fourplex here in Montreal, which I've refinanced twice now, they do stand their own ground. So, you know, they're, they bring in good revenue. 
Uh, are they making money? I would say the two is probably not making money because that's like barely making $100, $200, but it's given me two other multiplexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what that's not making, the 12 is bringing an, uh, in enough to actually cover whatever that one might be short. So you keep refinancing all these properties, you keep amortizing over like whatever that's 25 years or 30 years. Do you ever plan to pay off any of your properties or what's the what's the plan? What's the long-term plan, I guess, if you keep refinancing? Because basically you're gonna keep increasing that amortization back up to the limit of you know 25 years, whatever that is. So at this point in time, uh, we do, my husband and I both have our incomes, so we have our jobs. So we can have this debt, but mortgage debt is good debt. Like, I don't know how to explain that to the younger generation. And we have, we've had this conversation with our children. This is not a, a yacht, a boat, a car sitting in the driveway, depreciating every day, right? I, I just proved it to you with, with the 12 unit, what it's done in just 10 months. Hmm. I couldn't have pulled out $433,000 in 10 months out of my paycheck. I mean, that's not my paycheck. So <laughs> Am I going to refinance when it makes sense? Yes. So far, it's all made sense. So far, the market, the real estate market has allowed us, has allowed it to make sense. And it's been, the numbers have worked. The banks love the numbers. So they have no problem with the refinancing. Um, they do ask sometimes where the equity is going. So if you're going to do an equity takeout, it's like, where's that going? Do we plan on selling? Mm, not now. No, this is our, again, I say this, you never know what life brings, but then I mean, I never thought I'd live through a pandemic. Um, this is our paycheck. This is our retirement plan. So the cash flow of all these properties, when we retire, that's our monthly, the monthly income is our paycheck. Mm -hmm. Will we sell off one? Maybe. Uh, will we stop refinancing at some point? Yes. I'm not sure what that quite number, what that num magic number is for me. So we're going to be at 76 doors, I think, with the next one. I, I don't remember, 78, something like that. I don't know what the magic number is yet. Is it 100 and then I stop? I can't tell you. Or am I going to build 100? Maybe the next, <laughs> maybe the next project is building 100 from the ground up. So how is it that you manage your your day-to-day? -day? It's a two-part question. Do you think people should stay in their jobs longer? And the second part is, how do you then manage your real estate portfolio when you have a full-time job? Great questions. Yes, I think people, well, we get that real estate, that itch, that bug, right? We want to jump in. And I think social media is a little bit to blame about this because it's very keeping up with the Joneses. And I'm not one to care about that. So I think that's been my saving grace. Uh, I see it every day, people leaving their jobs to celebrate. And that is something to celebrate. If you're able to leave your job to do real estate, absolutely celebrate it. I'm not there yet. And it's funny you ask that question because many people have asked me, why haven't you quit your job if you have so many doors? But my job, again, it goes back to the banks being conservative. It makes it so easy when you mm -hmm. send in your bundle to the bank. So you've got, you know, the 135 documents plus your blood type to, to what they ask. And then you send your T4 and they're like, okay, you're stable. You've been working. You've been on the workforce for 40 something years. You've never been unemployed. You're stable, right? Mm -hmm. It makes it easy. And I'm at the stage now where I'm growing the portfolio. I want it to be easy. When I'm ready to say, I don't need to buy anymore, then I'll leave the job. I think people absolutely leave their jobs too soon. And it's a struggle. And I, I know people in, the, in our, our community of real estate investors who are struggling now because yes, they get to say I'm a real estate investor full time, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. And I still do like my job. So that helps. How do you manage the two? How do you manage yes. to, okay. to keep your full-time job? I mean, I know that just looking at buying a 12, 16, 20 unit building takes a lot of due diligence, a lot of time, a lot of energy. How do you balance that with your full-time job? Yeah. So I don't sleep much. To be honest. <laughs> I'll be very honest. I don't, I mean, <laughs> I never was a big sleeper, but now it's minimal. Um, my job is actually a very demanding job. I'm a general manager a, of a generic pharmaceutical company. So it's very demanding. I don't have the kind of job where I could take calls and be on the phone while at my office. So, and everybody that works with me knows that, right? So you text me if it's urgent. Uh, when we started this call, my property manager in New Brunswick was calling, right? But I mean, unless it's urgent and, I, and it wasn't because he didn't call back, mm -hmm. 
it would be like, call me back twice or just text it's urgent and I'll pick it up. But if it's not, if it's because, you know, I don't know, the cleaner went in and did something wrong, well then to me, that's, I'm not gonna pick up that call. Yeah. The hardest, I mean, the most difficult part for me is doing the due diligence. So right now we just, just finished the 16 that the 12 is paying for. The bundle went to this morning to CMHC. So it's ready to go. That was okay. So organize the appraisal, the environmental, the inspection, uh, you know, everything that comes with it, right? The financing, sending all those documents. But when, I mean, we've done this six times in the last year now. So all my documents are pretty much ready to go. You update your net, net worth, you update your bank statements that they ask for, you know, send the latest screenshots kind of thing. But everything else should be ready to go. You shouldn't have to be looking for your documents every single time you're buying a property. If, if that's what you're doing, then you're very disorganized and you need to get a better system in place. Because when a bank asks you, when a bank sends you a list for a refinance or a purchase, it's always the same documents. Mm -hmm. Give or take a few, it's always the same documents. Have those ready in a folder, ready to go. Um, I work with the same people, so they know me uh, in the same provinces, right? So whether it's Ontario or New Brunswick or Montreal, I work with the same people. They know me, they know that, I mean, the banks, I have to say, I'll pat myself on the back, love to work with me. I've actually had emails from mortgage brokers and bankers saying, you're so organized. I wish all my clients were like you. <laughs> it makes the process easy and quick. So yes, the calls are in the evening. Uh, evenings are all real estate, real estate, real estate. Weekends, have I missed a lot of last summer? Yes, there was a lot of real estate going on for multifamilies last year. Did it take up a lot of the, the summer days? Yes, it did. Uh, but it's bigger picture. It's for the future. So what I'm missing out on na now, I will gain by retiring at 55 instead of 65. And comfortably, not worrying. I don't want to worry. Once I, once I pull the plug, I want to be able to just pull the plug and not have to look back. And I don't want to regret it either. It I love this idea of you know, taking your properties and using them as basically you called it your ATM to be yeah. able to keep building your real estate investing portfolio. This is really exponential growth. Uh, yes. You know, we've, we've all been taught this exponential growth thing throughout our lives. Um, so I love that you use it in your real estate investing business. What's your best piece of advice for people that might have one or two properties that they have some equity in? How, what's the, what's the best step forward to be able to well, tap that equity and go and buy some additional properties? You're not going to create a huge amount of money for a down payment on a multiplex by working nine to five. I mean, it depends. I mean, search and salary maybe, but you just won't, it'll take forever. It'll take forever. Yeah. So property, whether it's your home, a small investment, uh, a small, uh, what you call it, uh, a small rental property, a large one, whatever size multiplex that is access to money. That is access to money because it's a guaranteed loan. The bank will see that as, okay, you have this property, it's paid for, there's a value there. I'll lend you money because I'm going to come get that asset if you don't pay up, right? So to them, it, there's a guarantee there. So use that, use that ATM or any building. I know some people have a, an issue with their homes, the home they live in with their families. So don't go remortgage it to the hilt if you can't, right? The numbers have to make sense. The numbers have to make sense. I can't stress that enough. And I tell people, if you're going to do anything in real estate, if you're going to start and start watching YouTube channels or following these people on Facebook and Instagram, learn how to crunch numbers. That's the most important thing in real estate investing. You need to understand the numbers. So if you're going to increase your debt here for here, what is this guy going to give you to take care of here so you can sleep at night. Uh, Adele, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your knowledge. Uh, I, I thought it was great insight into how to really build your portfolio using your existing properties, which I know many people have, and they're looking to get into that multifamily space. I'd love to have you back uh, because there's so many things we didn't get into today when we're talking about NOIs and, and expenses and how we look at those things. But I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I thought it was a, a great insight into uh, how to build your portfolio. If you guys enjoyed the session with Adele, go ahead and hit the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say Adele, thanks again for being here. I appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I look forward to a, a chance to, for us to be able to get back in the same room at some point, whether that's in Montreal or Toronto or wherever we meet next. I wish you the best of success. 
on your real estate investing journey. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you very soon. Thank you, Darren. And as I said to you, when I met you, I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> uh, well, see, now I want to be you when I grow up. So you, the, 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 the feeling's mutual. So, Hello. Thank, you, thank you for having me. I much appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right.